Welcome to the 8th edition of World Intellectual Property Forum. Hello everyone, I am Munish Sudan and uh, I head Intellectual Property Department of Tata Steel. I am going to discuss about strategic IP management. Let me display my presentation. Let me start my discussion uh, with uh, a quote from one of the greatest business gurus, uh, Michael Porter, and he says strategy is about making choices. And I think from a simplistic perspective, strategy is equally about deciding what not to do along with what to do. And I take it as a very, very distinct approach of any organization to meet the set strategic objectives. So I use the term distinct approach. And here is often most of the organizations get mistaken and they, what they do to meet the strategic objectives set by their organization, they try to mimic or copy the strategies of their peers or their industry leaders. Well, the strategic objectives could be same, but the distinct approach of a particular organization can't be same with that of any others. It's because of the fact that each organization has unique DNA unique culture and more importantly, very, very unique resource know-how. We will take this learning when we talk about IP strategy, when we think of developing any IP strategy. Before I go to discuss about IP strategy, first of all, we need to understand IP management for what? And I often ask this question, and I get a very common answer, and that is IP management to gain strategic competitive advantage. Well, the answer is not wrong, but that's the end objective. And that could be the ultimate objective of deploying any particular strategy. But how? How are IP management helps in achieving the strategic competitive advantage? And here, I find a very simple answer to that, that IP helps in creating the competitive advantage or leveraging that competitive advantage by creating differentiation. And I would further add, by creating differentiation that matters. And we'll deliberate further what it means when I say that matters. And when you're discussing about strategic IP management, there are two fundamental questions that we need to deliberate upon. The first is where to create IP and the second is how to exploit IP. We'll discuss this one by one. First start with where to create IP. When we are saying where to create IP, the first and foremost thing we need to understand any IP strategy which is not aligned with business strategy, which is not aligned with the business is going to be ineffective, is going to fail. And hence, when I say where to create IP, we need to create IP in the segment in your business area, which business finds value in the current context or may have business value in the future. And of course, the strategy need to differ when we are talking about the current context and the context where business might think that they may create business value in the future. And the second very important aspect is the time. We need to time the creation of IP when it matters. It should not be too early that the customers or the consumers are not ready to adapt it, or it should not be too late that it has become state of art. To give you one example, IoT has become buzzword in today's world. But IoT as a concept, as invention was known for decades. What 
has made it feasible in the current context is that we have the data storage capacity now we have the kind of connectivity which is needed for the uh, the the iot and more importantly we have, we have the processors which can process this high amount of data in quick fractions of time so we need to understand that time is very very critical when we talk about creating strategic ip management and who has understand it better than mr thomas addison who one of the greatest innovator of 20th century which which put it very simply that anything won't sell i don't want to invent it said is proof of its utility and utility success utility comes from value and that's where i was mentioning differentiation that matters only those things would matter which has value and things which would have value those would be utilized by the customers and if i put it in a very very straight forward and blunt fashion i would say for any business ip which doesn't cover any underlying process or a product is not more than a piece of paper and when we are talking about creating ip in the business segments where it has a value we need to understand it it looks simple but it's not simple because organizations are very complex there are multiple departments there are multiple r and d sections and hence we need to keep on evaluating our ip portfolio to understand what should be the focus area of that organization and i put it into 2 by 2 matrix and it's no brainer uh, to find that the upper quadrant is or should be the focus area of any organization and when we talk about core differentiators these these ips have very high commercial values at the same time these have high competitive advantage because they are having strong ip enforceability at the same time we need to understand that we need to keep on populating this core differentiator and you can only populate when you are strong in this particular section where we are saying ip for future options in market and certainty is there and we need to also understand the another quadrant which is ip in the crowded computing technologies now this might be the section which can help you in terms of facilitating collaborations cross licensing at the same time you need to keep on taking strategic calls on the the lower most uh, left quadrant that is ip which is difficult to be enforced and have become state of art you need to keep on taking strategic calls in terms of abandoning it or donating it or maybe you know selling it off if you can create some value proposition around that so if i sum up dear part of the strategy i would say the first and the foremost is that ip can't be seen in isolation whenever we decide to create ip it needs to be seen from the light of business if it's seen in isolation it won't create the effect on the overall organizational performance you may have big portfolios you may have granted portfolio worldwide but those are not going to bring value and the second very very important that offering is not the key offering new to the customer is not the key but offering new or the differentiated product which matters that is the key to the customers let's move on to the, the second uh, very very important question um, that we put forward during the start of presentation and that is how to exploit ip and it basically revolves around three fundamental questions how ip is creating value how ip is delivering value and how ip is capturing value fundamentally these three questions can be answered very simply that ip creates value by a differentiation ip delivers values by creating exclusivity and ip captures value by you know offering super competitive pricing because you have exclusivity by cost savings if you have process related ip by licensing or by facilitating collaborations but i have picked some of the key 
are areas where people sometimes get mistaken when they're developing their IP strategies. And I'll, I'll try to elaborate those in next uh, subsequent slides. Uh, the first is very important that time your filings. Uh, when I grew up in IP domain learning, it was told to us that file as soon as possible. Well, that could be true for certain domains, but that can't be a thumb rule. We need to understand the kind of technologies where we are getting in. And we need to keep the ultimate objective in mind. That is, it's very important to time the market, but it's equally important that how long you remain in the market. So creating exclusivity when it matters, when market is ready to adapt your technology, it matters then. And more importantly, if you can extend and leverage that exclusivity for the longest possible duration, it's it's the ultimate target. And hence, we need to time our filings. Uh, and that again, we need it, it, it totally depends upon the kind of technology we are developing in. If we are developing a break through portfolios, we really think that time to market may take seven to eight years and we are the only one which need to create push the market. I think we need to time the filings as well. That's very, very important. Uh, another very critical aspect which people sometimes miss when I'm saying extending your exclusivity to the possible uh, manner, people forget that Technologies are combinations of patents, know-hows, publications, trade secret. And as technologies move from conceptualization to commercialization, the, the resource know-how, the know-how share increases. And hence, we need to come up with IP strategy, which takes into account these, these three fundamental aspects, which are patents, trade secrets, or know-how, as well as the defensive publication. Because if you are creating a breakthrough, breakthrough patent portfolio, it may comprise of hundreds of patents and you just not need to count the numbers, but you need to also manage the IP cost, cost of those portfolios. The second very, very important aspect is that you need to remain relevant. Having secured one particular portfolio doesn't mean that future belongs to you. And hence, you need to continuously keep on scanning the market, continuously keep on seeing the trend and create the future portfolios. Uh, I don't need to deliberate much, but companies like Intel and Microsoft have mastered their, uh, mastered this art of remaining relevant by offering new services, new products, which, uh, enlightens which excites their customers. And the third aspect is that we need to also understand who is driving our IP portfolio. It's very, very important. We need to understand whether it's a technology driven, whether it's a market driven and customer driven. And accordingly, we need to take a call on IP strategy. If it's a technology driven, it needs to be taken to account from a multiple perspective. If it's a market driven, time the filing as soon as possible. And customer driven, it could be strategic where you don't may or may not file the IPs as well. So it's also very, very important aspect that companies do come across and we need to tweak our IP strategy accordingly. Fourth, we are living in a very, very competitive world and uh, IP costs are increasing and hence we need to keep on relooking our patent portfolios. Uh, along with creating portfolios for the future, we need to also understand that uh, which are the portfolios which have become redundant, which have become uh, worthless in light of our current business context and hence take calls on abandoning, donating or licensing the portfolios. Very, very important use IP for driving strategic collaborations. And when I talk about this, I specifically talk about driving strategic collaborations, which are inter-industries, between inter-industries. And 
uh, your IPs can create a lot of values when we are talking about this interdisciplinary collaborations. Uh, so use uh, your portfolios, analyze your portfolios and see where it can create values for other industries. We are together, two industries can come together and create a value proposition which could be equally powerful for both the industries. And we also need to understand that IP doesn't arise in the year. We need to keep on populating our R&D pipelines. And if our R&D pipeline is, is uh, good enough, is rosy enough, uh, we can have, uh, as I discussed about core differentiators, we can have core differentiators if we have game changes in our portfolios. And hence, we need to understand that we need to have more and more oysters in our R&D portfolio, which can be converted into game changers and in turns which helps us in creating IPs, which, which are core differentiator in our IP portfolio. Bread and butter, of course, every company takes care. They, they manage it well, they understand it better, but this is the quadrant, the game changer quadrant, which we need to populate, we need to create, and for that, we need to have lot and lot of oysters. And at the same time, we need to also cut down our cost by eliminating white elephants. If I sum up uh, for strategic IP management, we need to have an integrated model. And when I say integrated model, it means we need to have synergistic uh, strategy comprising of business strategy, intellectual property strategy, and technology strategy. And we need to understand that creating IP is definitely important, but what is more important that how we are creating value through that IP. That's going to be the the, the game changer and that's going to be the, the fundamental differentiator. Thank you. Uh, in case you have any questions related to my discussion, you can always reach out to me uh, through LinkedIn and uh, I would be happy to discuss or clarify any doubts or queries that you may have. Thanks.